When I was recording that Cardinal Health three-part series, I was totally certain that as soon as they reported their Q4 earnings, people would realize how undervalued this company actually is. So of course, as you can imagine, I was absolutely shocked when the shares dropped another 17% to approximately $50 per share. So am I still a buyer of this stock? Absolutely I am. Now let me put it simply, if I was a buyer at $60 a share and the share price just went down to 50, I'm even more of a buyer at this price. And just to put it into perspective guys, the share price is now so low that the company has entered into the single digit price to earnings ratio range. And let's be real guys, Cardinal Health is not going anywhere. This company is here for the long term. So in this update video to Cardinal Health, I got eight things that you need to take away from the Q4 earnings release before you purchase the shares of Cardinal Health. You're watching more money. Let's get it. What's up everyone? Thanks so much for tuning in. I'm Tay and you're watching the number one channel on YouTube for people that wanna retire early. Now let's jump right into it. Now the first point to note from their fiscal year 2021 results is that Cardinal Health continues to experience headwinds as it navigates this uncertain COVID-19 environment. Management provided 2022 guidance, but it was lower than what I was expecting as well as what the street was expecting. Cardinal Health is targeting between 5.6 and $5.9 per share in adjusted earnings and I was expecting something closer to around $6 to around $6.25 a share. For fiscal year 2022, I've adjusted my model to fall right in the middle of that target at approximately $5.75 per share of EPS. And of course, you can grab that updated model from the description below. And the way that management is expecting to get to their guidance for fiscal year 2022 is that they expect that the COVID-19 headwinds will largely subside, plus they'll get normalized earnings growth, but it is expected to be offset in part by slightly higher CapEx as they continue to invest in the business. Also guys, some really good news. They were so successful with their 500 million cost savings initiative, which I discussed in the Cardinal Health series. So as a result, they have increased that goal and now they expect to achieve $750 million of annualized cost savings from their fiscal 2018 baseline. That's honestly really huge because it shows that they're able to execute on this initiative and are proactively looking at ways to make the business run more efficiently. Now to put that into perspective, that'll add an additional 33% to the free cash flow bottom line using 2018 as your baseline, which is what they're doing. Now, to me, that's really good because what it's showing is that management is not just saying these things, but they're actually executing on them. And like I always say, don't watch what management says, watch what they do. And these guys are winning. Now, with all of that said, should this lower guidance really crater the share price by almost 20% as we saw this week, especially for a top line operator like Cardinal Health? I don't think so. But the story here really is that they're being challenged on multiple fronts with multiple headwinds. They have weaker actual earnings in this uncertain environment. They have lower guidance for fiscal year 2022 than what anybody was expecting. And they have the overhang of the opioid settlement liability. If you put all these three things together, it's just a challenging time to be an operator in this space. So we're seeing what we would expect to see. Investors are selling it off and are just walking away. Now myself, I'm a value investor, which means that I'm contrarian by nature. So this actually sounds like a perfect time to buy because we always buy strong operators when there's blood on the streets. Look, no business is going to be perfect all the time. There's going to be challenges. But when I think about owning a business, I think about owning it over the long term. So they will get over these things. I absolutely believe so. So if you ask me, I'm still a buyer and I'm looking for really good opportunities to purchase in this environment. Also guys, don't forget the most important thing that you could acquire free of charge might I add is the satisfactory feeling of smashing that like button. It really helps YouTube know that this channel provides valuable content and thus they'll share it with more viewers. Okay, the second takeaway was that I was expecting the Cordis transaction to close in the quarter, but it looks like it closed just outside of the quarter on August 2nd. This is relevant guys because the cash from the transaction in the amount of approximately a billion dollars is not yet on the balance sheet. So you'll note that in my model, I have accounted for that excess cash separately. On their Q3 call, they did mention that they were going to have approximately 2 billion of additional cash from the divestiture and tax receivable of which 1.4 billion would be used to pay down debt. And then I naturally assume that the additional 600 million can go towards share buybacks or they can just park it on the balance sheet. It makes no difference to me. Now I'll touch more on the share buyback situation in point number seven. Moving to my third point, I actually thought that the share price decline was overdone when the shares are trading at under $60 a share. And now that they're hovering around $50 a share, I believe that this pullback is way more than overdone. We're now getting into that deep single digit PE ratio territory. At $50 a share, I'm now seeing a free cash flow yield of approximately 13% as opposed to the 11% with the 5% annualized growth rate, which I was quoting in the initial Cardinal Health series. So what we're looking at now with a free cash flow yield of approximately 13% 
and I still expect earnings to grow out of approximately 5% a year, we're looking at an 18% return. And that's if the valuation never adjusts, but we know that the valuation will eventually adjust. And so you'll make a return there too, but I'm looking to own this forever. So I don't really care what it trades for in the market. Now, moving to the fourth takeaway, it's clear that the business is still healthy and growing. Management is gearing towards double digit FY 2022 revenue and profit growth by focusing on five areas. As you can see, those areas are the specialty solution space, the at-home business, nuclear and precision health solutions, medical services, and they're securing key wins and renewals. Now, personally, I don't have enough information to talk about the key wins part. That's a wait and see, but on the renewal front, this should always be a strong showing by focusing on and maintaining relationships with all customers so that when renewal time comes, you don't lose any major business. Now, the point that I have to make here is that if they do a good job and hitting their goals in each of those first four areas, they will be diving deeper into higher margin business territory, which is exactly what I hope that they do. Because remember guys, the biggest risk in the business is the fact that it's a low margin business. So the more that this company can dive into higher margin businesses, the better it is overall for the health of the business. Now, the fifth takeaway guys is that CapEx is expected to be slightly higher as they digitize the business. Cardinal Health is looking to expand their direct to patient digital footprint. Now, the sixth takeaway is that you should expect a 1% dividend increase in fiscal year 2022. They have so much free cash flow that this is almost inevitable. I would expect more hikes in the future, but personally, when the shares are this low, I actually prefer share buybacks. And to be honest, I would even be happy if they postponed any debt reductions and use that excess cash to buy back shares while they're so depressed, and then go back to paying down debt at a later date when the share price rebounds. Now, the seventh takeaway does tie into the sixth point where they have so much cash lying around right now that they've announced that that they're gonna to expect to step up that share buyback to the range of approximately 500 million to a billion dollars. You'll notice that the top end amount is double to what they have done in the past five years. And if 2015 is any indication, they will not hesitate to buy back close to a billion dollars of shares in any given year. I think fiscal 2022 is the year where they actually buy back more than a billion dollars in shares because this is the most accretive opportunity that you have to buy back shares. The other thing that they can do is if there's competitor companies that are also being depressed in this industry right now, they can actually make incredibly accretive acquisitions right now. So personally, I'm open to either. Now, the last takeaway that I really wanna go at is what does the options picture look like here? You guys already know that when it comes to looking at companies and making a position, I always look at the option situation as well. Sometimes I'll just flat out buy the shares. Sometimes I'll sell cash secured puts. Sometimes I'll even do covered calls. It just depends on what the situation looks like. Now the one month out cash secured put yields for a strike price 10% under the Friday, August 6th close are only giving you a 1.1% yield. So although the shares are depressed right now and I would purchase them for $50, I don't really wanna wield this by selling cash secured puts until I see a 1.5% yield here. And to be honest, this may come as the shares become more volatile in the next little while. So we'll be looking out for that. Right now, I think that the best move is to just buy the shares outright. If you really wanted to, you can go in the money with the March 18th, 2022, $60 cash secured puts that will pay you an annualized 31.5% return, which is way better than the 21% that I got, but expect to be called at $60 per share. I don't know if the shares will recover back to that $60 per share range by then. Either way, your net purchase price would still be under $50 per share, so you're not doing bad at all. All right, guys, that's it for the eight takeaways that I got from reading their Q4 financials. Let me know what you think. Are you buying Cardinal Health? Is this something that you're interested in? Or do you not want to touch it? Is there something that I've missed out on? Let me know. That's what the comments are for. All right, guys, I'll see you later. Thank <laughs> you.